And you've seen no signs of the Grey Wardens anywhere. You're certain? Firestone. Grey Wardens, you said? Oh, Maker, you're here. You're the Herald of Andraste. And you were sent to shame us for mistreating the elves. I, I pay my elves good and proper, you should know. Friend of the age, and they all, and... I mean, I'm Flissa. Can I get you a drink? It's all right, Flissa. I won't do anything frightening. If you wanted to close the breach, I wouldn't mind. As I said, I'm Flissa. The Inquisition soldiers needed a place to unwind, so Leliana brought me in to set up a tavern. Nothing fancy, but it's safer for the soldiers than looking for trouble in some village. You said Leliana asked you to run an Inquisition tavern. How did you mean? Dumb luck, maybe. I managed an inn back in Denerim. When I heard interesting gossip, I passed word to Liliana. Sometimes it was helpful. She asked if I wanted to own my own tavern, and I said yes. I didn't realize she meant this. What can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harrit is the Inquisition smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren the Quartermaster can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segret. His prices aren't too high. Yet. Oh, there's also my name. She studies beasts and things, as I understand. Farewell. Goodbye. The Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodated. But you understand my caution. You came here to help, Solus. I won't let them use that against you. How would you stop them? However I had to. Thank you. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal. 
but I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? Why not? Privacy? Caution? Concern about the direction of this Inquisition once our work is done? Then don't tell me. I wasn't asking as part of the Inquisition. I am sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. They treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imaginations. To find interesting areas, one must be interesting. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroyed the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I've enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. Indomitable focus? Presumably. I have yet to see it dominated. I imagine that the sight would be fascinating. Mm -hmm. You said you traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment. I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed, and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. 
You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, a chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? You have an interesting way of looking at the world, Solus. I try. And that isn't quite an answer. I look forward to helping you make new friends. That should be... well... That isn't quite an answer, either. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Sacred asked, told me that he can't let the herbs go for anything less than eight. Fine. We'll gather our own. Tell Segret, he better hope he doesn't need a salve anytime soon. Ha! <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can pay me back by fixing the world. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. How are your people holding up? There's no shortage of work. That's for damn sure. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. Farewell. Greetings. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. Your mark allows you to exert some control over the breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fae. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fae was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality, where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful, and the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. 
Your Dalish say the demons hate the natural world, seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon? Has that wish gone wrong? Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation. Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one. And it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. What can I do for you? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. I thought you'd be more interested in sharing your opinions of elven culture. You are Dalish, are you not? Yes, I am. The Dalish are the best hope for preserving the culture of our people. Our people? You use that phrase so casually. It should mean more. But the Dalish have forgotten that, among other things. Oh, but you know the truth, right? While they pass on stories, mangling details, I walk the fade. I have seen things they have not. Fine. You think we're terrible. What about the alienages full of elves who aren't Dalish? Why? What would it benefit some poor man in a Ferelden alienage to learn that his ancestors strode the land like gods? It would only make him bitter, or inspire him to take a foolish risk and get himself killed. You've decided his reaction for him. Perhaps I have. If you have questions and believe the answers will help, ask. Is the magic they teach in the Circle different from the magic I learned with my people? No, and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water. But it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval. Although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. The legends of elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic in an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. To be honest, I don't see it as different from any other magic. It's a means to an end. Indeed. The problem is that under the Chantry, blood magic is forbidden, so only criminals practice it. While in Tevinter, Magisters compete with each other, instead of keeping their volatile friends in check. They always succeed through power, so they have never had the chance to learn another way. I'd like to know more about the Elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Elvenan was the Empire, and Arlathan its greatest city. A place of magic and beauty. Lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees, and imagine wooden ramps or Dalish aravels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Are we going to have new verses in the chart of Fry walk, but here we go.